Today, in Surprisingly Connected Etymologies, we're taking a look at some birds. Just before I go to the birds, I mean get to the birds, if you're interested in learning more about how etymology works, stick around at the end of the video to hear about a new public course I'm teaching about the basics of historical linguistics. So, we used to be told that the start of life was when the stork brought us to our parents. And funnily enough, this is etymologically appropriate, if biologically inaccurate. Stork comes through Old English stork from the Proto-Indo-European root stare, stiff, because of the bird's stiff movements. This root also leads to Old English sturton, to start, leap up, and Modern English start, as the sense shifted from stiff to move briskly or stiffly, to move suddenly, and eventually to begin to move. A canary and a hound seem like quite different animals, and yet etymologically they're one and the same. Hound, or Old English hund, used to be the basic word for dog. It comes from the Pi root quinto, which comes from the base quon, dog. Another derivative of this root, cani, leads to Latin canis, dog. Romans in the first century found islands off the northwest coast of Africa, which had on them a particular large breed of dog. From the Latin adjective canarius, of dogs, they came to be known as the Canary Islands. Later on, in the 16th century, a particular type of finch, also found on the Canary Islands, was exported to England, and they came to be known as canary birds. Trade is also behind our next bird pairing, turkey and turquoise. Turkey the bird is in fact named after Turkey the country, not because it comes from there, but because it was confused with another somewhat similar bird, the guinea fowl, that was traded into Europe through the Ottoman Empire and thus became known as Turkey in England. When the bird from the Americas started to be imported, it got lumped together with the other foreign fowl and ended up taking over its name. Similarly, most of the turquoise that came to Europe did so by way of Turkish trade, hence its name. The country's name itself has disputed and unclear origins beyond being named after the people known as the Turks. A thrush and an ostrich are very different sized birds, but etymologically they're the same. Thrush comes from Old English thrusche, which in turn comes from Proto-Germanic thruskion, and pi trosdo, also referring to the thrush bird. This same root leads to Greek struthos, thrush, and in one hell of an understatement, megastruthos, literally great or big sparrow, referred to the ostrich, which was also known as struthocamelos, literally thrush camel, because of its long camel-like neck. Eventually struthos on its own came to refer to the ostrich, and as it passed through Latin it was combined with awis, bird, leading to vulgar Latin awistruthius, which became Old French ostrusa and English ostrich. Etymologically speaking, you should find goose served in a smorgasbord. Goose has a pretty straightforward history, from Old English gos, Proto-Germanic gans, and Proto-Indo-European gans, meaning goose swan, and is probably imitative of the honking sound the bird makes. Unsurprisingly then, Swedish has the word gos, goose. What is more surprising is the Swedish compound word smorgos, which is literally butter goose, but is used to mean slice of bread with butter. The first element, smör, related to English smear, is Swedish for butter, and in this context gos means lump of butter, by way of comparison to goose fat. Smorgosbord, then, with board, related to English board, meaning table, came to refer to food served buffet style, and entered English as smorgasbord, eventually gaining the figurative sense of medley miscellany. Before I end, I have an exciting announcement. I'm going to be teaching a series of short online seminars about the basics of etymology and historical linguistics. It's hosted by Speakeasy, and I'll be working through some linguistic puzzles to teach about the tools and methods etymologists use to reconstruct the origin of words and the history of English. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy, I'd love for you to join me. See the link in the description for more information and to register. Hope to get to meet some of you in an upcoming class. Thanks for watching. This is one in a series of occasional short videos about connected etymologies. 
To see more, you can also follow The Endless Knot on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram.